Aren't you getting bored with Kubernetes monitoring tools or looking more or less the same? Well, today we are going to explore yet another one, but with a twist. This time we are going to use eBPF to help us with monitoring tasks, specifically with collecting all the metrics and data points that we need. Now the word eBPF is important for two reasons. First of all, because you're familiar with it and you're familiar with it because you watched that video. And second, because it is revolutionary, but not widely used yet. And that makes a lot of sense simply because eBPF is new to begin with. And second, because monitoring solutions spent years developing the bits and pieces that they need without eBPF. So transitioning to UPF is not that easy. And that's where new projects, new products, new services come in. And one of those is ground cover. Apart from being based on eBPF, ground cover is special because it includes everything you might need for monitoring. There are metrics, there are logs, there are events, there are traces, everything that falls onto the observability umbrella is there and it's very easy to set up. So instead of looking for infinite amount of tools that you need to combine to set your system up to observe whatever you need to observe, you can just install a ground cover and start using it. Now let's see how it works in action. And then later on, we're going to talk about it and see whether you should be using it or no. So let me find the bench to sit, open my laptop and see ground cover. I already installed ground cover, but before we start using it, let's have a quick look at what we got, what I got in my cluster by installing it. There are a few components, some of them are specific to ground cover, but what it matters here is that there is Loki, my choice for storing metrics, there is TSDB, which is most likely used to store traces, so we have logs and traces, and then metrics in Victoria metrics. And that's absolutely amazing. I think that everybody should be switching from Prometheus to Victoria metrics, at least when you need to run things at scale or collect metrics at scale. Now that my cluster is ready to start receiving all types of observability data, let me deploy a silly application by executing kubectl, namespaces production, and so on and so forth. So my application should be running or should be trying to run. We'll see about that. So let me go to ground cover and see what we've got. On the home screen there are services, but none of them is silly demo. I cannot see my application among the services, and if I go to the list of namespaces, there is no production. Now that's strange, because I certainly do have a namespace called production, and I certainly at least tried to run an application there. So either the application is running, and I cannot see it in ground cover, or there is an issue and ground cover is not reporting it, at least on the home screen. Not a good start. Okay, so services are not really working for this application. And I suspect that services are based on information that somehow one way or another come from containers and my application might not yet be running for reasons I do not know yet. So, okay, let's say that for one reason or another, my application is not in services, but I certainly should have an issue reported in ground cover. Let me go to issues and that's empty as well. How about Kubernetes events? There must be at least an event saying, hey, what the heck is going on? Why is not my application running? And why there are no issues? There must be some events related to it. And here I do see the production namespace, finally. And I can filter the events by the namespace and over there I can see that there is a problem with the secret. My application requires a secret to connect to the database and that makes sense. I did not create or deploy the database yet. So it makes perfect sense that the application is not running because it is missing a secret and secret is not there because I did not yet create the database. But why doesn't ground cover show any of the information about the issue because that's the purpose. That's why I'm in ground cover. I want to see the issues I'm having in my cluster 
And I suspect that it is showing it only as events because it is in large part tracking containers and containers are not starting yet. Nevertheless, at least I could detect that there is a problem in events. Now, let me double check that that's really the case. I'm going to execute kubectl and so on and so forth and retrieve all the pods. And I can see that there should be two pods of my application. They're not starting. And if pods are not starting, that means that containers are not starting. It makes sense because, again, of the secret. But it doesn't make sense that ground cover is not reporting on it yet, at least not everywhere. So let me deploy the mysterious database and hopefully fix the issue. And I'm going to do that with Helm, upgrade, dash dash install, and so on and so forth. I want to run PostgreSDB. And to create the mysterious secret, I need to retrieve the password, which is encoded in a different Kubernetes secret. And then I'm going to encode that password and I'm going to create the secret my application needs. I'm fixing the issue right now. Now, before I go to ground cover, let me double check manually first from command line whether my application is now running and I can do that by retrieving all the pods. And besides the database, there are two replicas of my application. Ground cover should now at least start showing me more information. Better late than never. If I go back to the overview, now there is a namespace production. I can filter all the services by that namespace and I can see that there is silly demo and PostgreSDB none of them having any issues yet, which is still not good because I definitely did have issues that I solved now. But nevertheless, let's say that we are starting now again. I'm uh, forgetting everything I saw so far in and what I did so far with my application and say my application is running and ground cover says no issues. Great. Now, if I go to that specific application, silly demo, I can see the details or additional information related with the specific what ground cover calls service. There is an overview. There is a summary of all the requests going to that application or to the pods of that application. There is a list of errors, latencies, a map of how that application is communicating with other applications. Right now it's empty because I'm not yet using the application itself. That will change very, very soon. And then additional information at the bottom. We're going to go through all that later when I start generating some traffic. The interesting part is that if I go to the events, I can see that there were issues with this application in the past. Now it caught up. Now it figured out what happened in the past when it couldn't figure out. So I suspect that this screen is filtered somehow by uh, resources that are related to containers and containers did not exist before. So one thing for ground cover to fix. But once we pass that hurdle, now I can see all the information, including the events in this page. And this is absolutely awesome. I'm starting to love this tool. Now let me send a request to my application, which in turn will talk to the database. And I'm going to do that with CURL command simple and there is an error right and that makes sense because i did create a database server but i did not create a database inside of that server and i definitely did not create tables so right now there is no database in that server and my application cannot work there is an error what i want to see is whether this error is reflected in ground cover especially in the networking part because there was a networking error a database said no no you cannot do this. So going back to ground cover, refreshing the screen, and it says there is a problem. We need to solve this problem. And it detected everything needs to be detected. I did not configure anything. And this is one of the things I really like about ground cover. It is overarching, all-encompassing solution that combines all types of data you need for observability and all that without sidecar containers, EVPF, baby. But we are going to talk about that later. What matters for now is that ground cover is showing me saying, hey, there is a problem with communication between your application or something within your application. Let's go inside and see what it says. There we go. I have one issue. And if I go to the issues, I can see that there is an internal server error. So it figured it all out. Absolutely amazing. I'm really liking this tool after the initial hurdle. And if I go to that issue, I can see the details. I can see the message scraped by ground cover and coming from 
uh, PostgreSDB saying, hey, the database does not exist. I can see it in a different view. I can go directly to issues if I want to, and I will see it there as well. Now let's fix this issue. I'm simulating live debugging and fixing issues, and I'm going to do that by spinning up a separate pod with PC equals CLI. And once inside the client, the container with the client, I'm going to create the database first, then I'm going to connect to that database, and I'm going to create a table called videos. It's a silly application, it requires only one table. And now if I go out of the container with PC equal client, I should be able to send requests. And I will confirm that by sending one CRL request to enter one entry into the database, another request to enter a second entry to the database, and the, the third one will be a repetition of the previous one. I want to generate, uh, forcefully generate an error by trying to insert an existing key into the database. That will throw a different type of error, and I want to see whether a ground cover will detect that, and whether it will show me all the information that I might need. And finally, I'm going to send a different re CURL request to retrieve the data from the database. I'm checking whether everything works, it does, and I'm generating errors by putting duplicated key to the database. Now I'm done. Now I can go back to ground cover and see what it says. If I go back to issues, I can see that there is unique key violation. And I really like this because it is discovering, it is figuring out everything for me. And that's awesome because I did not need to bother with setting up special importers or exporters actually for specific databases and so on and so forth. It figured everything out and it is not just saying there is an error. I know what exactly is not working. In this case, unique key violation. I can even see what is the SQL command that was executed. So it sniffed it out. I can even see the parameters of that command as well with the data, so I can see everything. And that makes this solution absolutely amazing. Everything I can imagine is there, except the initial missing parts at the very, very beginning, but we are over that now. There is also information about the containers, container info, I can see the logs, and I can see the context of the specific entity that I'm exploring right now. Now let me put this to the test. I'm going to execute K6, a command, um, I'm going to use K6 to load test my application. I'm going to bomb my application with requests. Some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be uh, fake, not fake, but produce some errors. I want to generate some real traffic and see whether I can see all that happening in ground cover. This will take a couple of minutes. So let's fast forward through the first K6 command and then through the second K6 command and by the way, if you're not familiar with K6, check out the link over there. The banner is there, actually. The link is in the description. Uh, it's a great tool for load testing, performance testing of your applications. Now, if I go back to the overview of ground cover, I can see that there are some issues with my application silly demo. There are some issues with traffic, which is my ingress controller, and there are some issues reported in the database. Ground cover is doing it all. It's showing me everything that's happening. I can and I will filter everything by production namespace because I do not need the whole system. I know where the where I want to look at and over there there is the application in the database. Inside the application when I enter into my service or application realistically I can see that there are issues. I can see the increase in requests and some of them being errors, those in red. I can see that there are two reported incidents there are more instances of uh, the incident, but two reported distinct incidents. So it's not overwhelming me with repeated, 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 the same. I can see those same incidents in the errors. I can see the latencies and I can see the map. And the map looks, not looks, it is very interesting because it shows me the communication happening or going from and to this specific service. I can expand it into the full view and see maybe in more detail what's happening with network traffic. And this is cool. This is tracing now. This is similar to what Jager would give me. I can see that the traffic is coming from the external load balancer. It goes to my application, then it goes to the database and back, and I can see the details of each of those components. Now, this is another slightly problematic part. It's not really clear what all those details are, and ground cover has no documentation 
at all. There are like two pages that are useless. So it's not always easy to figure out what's going on and what is what. Very often, most of the time, it is intuitive. So you don't need documentation. But if you do get confused, then bad luck. Like right now, I'm confused about all the details I have in the network map. What's that data? I'm not sure. Let me go back to the application itself, the one that is misbehaving and see what else do we have there. There is infrastructure, for example. It shows me the memory and CPU consumption of my application. I can see whether it is spiking or there is, it is underutilized. I can see whatever I should see about resources, and that's really nice. I can see the pods, the events, issues, everything related to that specific application. I can click on any of the issues and then see all the details, all the specific instances of that same issue, which is awesome. There is a section with workloads, you know, deployments, replica sets, pods. Unfortunately, I do not see uh, any custom resources here. Maybe that's because I'm not running any, so I will run some custom resources later to double check because that's, that part is important. <laughs> Nevertheless, I can see workloads so far, generic at least. There is a separate section for a map with network requests and how they communicate with each of the components in your cluster. The list of issues. Then there are traces, API catalog, logs, Kubernetes events, and dashboards. Now, dashboards are interesting because I believe, and I might be wrong, that ground cover is using Grafana in the background to show some predefined dashboards. And then we can extend those dashboards and create our own. And that's great because so many solutions of this kind are trying to figure out everything you might need, but then when you need something else, you cannot easily extend it. But with ground cover, you can create your own additional dashboards with whatever you might be missing or whatever is you need and is not provided by ground cover. That's awesome. And finally, there are alerts. And they are absolutely a must simply because you shouldn't replace uh, Netflix with ground cover and just watch the screen. You should create alerts that will notify you when there is something going on, something that shouldn't be going on, something that is wrong, that's something that requires your attention, and then go to ground cover to see what's going on and figure out the cause of any issue. Do not use it as a replacement for Netflix. Create alerts. Finally, in settings, uh, we can see the prices, the pricing. The good news is that there is a free option. If you have one cluster and up to three users that might need to use ground cover, it's free, use it, it's a no-brainer. For bigger teams or bigger systems, the price is 20 bucks per node, which gives you almost everything you need. And then there is custom prices for enterprises, the big guys, you will need to contact the ground cover for those. It sounds like a fair pricing. Anyways, you have a free option, start with that, try it out, and then see whether you want to expand. The last thing I want to do before we go into pros and cons is to double check that ground cover indeed cannot handle custom resource definitions or custom resources. And I'm going to do that by deploying, applying a cross-plane resource. I'm not featuring cross-plane now. I just want to see whether it works with custom resources. So I created a resource with cross-plane. And if I go back to workloads, there is nothing no mention of cross-plane resources or my claims or none of those things over there. And that's bad because it might sound, hey, I do not need custom resources, but you do. Almost all third-party applications you are using are requiring custom resources, like uh, Argo CD, right? If you use Argo CD, you're creating custom resources. If you're using something else, you're creating custom resources. And that's currently not covered with ground cover or at least not immediately obvious where those are. Where are my cross-plane resources? I don't know. Can I see something about them? Probably, but not in workloads. If I go to events, then it's there. So I'm not completely blind with custom resources, but it's not well integrated either. And I suspect that that's due to the same reasons as what we discovered initially, that ground cover uh, discovers many of the things based on containers when there are no containers and it gets slightly confused. Anyways, let's go to pros and cons. Let's talk about ground cover, whether you should use it, what are the good things, what are the bad things, and so on and so forth. No, from the end user perspective, ground cover is nothing special. 
I could do everything that I'm doing with ground cover without ground cover. I can install Prometheus or Victoria Metrics myself. I can install the exporters, infinite number of exporters that would get metrics from my system and my applications and put them into Prometheus or Victoria Metrics. I could instrument my application with open telemetry and ship traces to Jager or Grafana Tempo. I can install Promptail that will ship my logs to Loki. I can do quite a lot of things and then I would get something very similar to ground cover. But it would take me ages to do all that. That's a tremendous amount of work that I would need to put in myself to get something that resembles ground cover. And on top of that, I would still need to deal with sidecars and madness that comes with it. And ground cover gives me all that in an easy setup without sidecars, with eBPF, with an amazing user interface. Could I do it without ground cover? Yes. Should I do it? Probably not, if I can afford it, of course. Now let's talk about pros and cons, and I'll start with negative things, with the bad things. The first one is the initial issue with not figuring out that there is a problem with my application because the containers, the pods were not running. It did not discover that, at least not in some views. It did in other views. So. Initially, it was a bit finicky until my pod started running, but from there on, it was great. Still, that's a negative thing. Some of the screens are extremely useful, but some not that much. Like network map is a nice feature, but I see it being green. I think that network map, you know, all the traces there and how they relate to each other could be greatly improved. Now, here's another annoying thing. There is no way to mute issues or events or things. There is no way to say, yeah, I know that that is happening and you should ignore it. Or at least I didn't find a way to do that. So if there is a way to mute things, I did not find out how to do it. Another slightly annoying thing is that there is no way to customize the views. I did not find a way to say, hey, this is what team A should see and this is what team B should see because they care about some things and others care about other things. So there is no customization that can be applied on per team or per person basis. I would like to be able to create my own views. I know that I can do that through the dashboard section, but I would like that to be applied on whole ground cover. Documentation is non-existent. Don't even try going to the documentation of ground cover. It almost doesn't exist. Now, I understand why that's so, because the UI should be very intuitive and it is most of the time, but when it isn't, then documentation would help, really. I would like to see better documentation or maybe tooltips in the UI or something that would give me an indication of what is what. And finally, ground cover covers a lot of different disparate pieces of data. There are traces, logs, events, metrics, and so on and so forth. And that's absolutely amazing. But I think it could improve on relating all those. Data between relations between different types of data is not necessarily always consistent. Now let's go through positive things to the pros. And first of all, is that it's all in one solution. Everything that I could imagine is there. You need logs, they're there. You need events, they're there. You need the issues, they're there. You need metrics, they're there. You need uh, what else is missing. Whatever else is missing, everything is there. Everything I could imagine I might need is there with a simple setup. The second point is eBPF. eBPF is amazing. That's the future, or at least I think that's the future. And I'm really happy to see ground cover leveraging it. It is a new player on the market, ground cover. eBPF is also relatively new technology and those two combine very well together. Next, it is very efficient in storing data. It does not store all the data, everything, and then you don't use most of it. It efficiently decides what is relevant and what is not and stores only data that is required, that is needed, and it groups the data. It, anyways, it is efficient. You're running everything yourself except the web UI and you will not pay an extraordinary bill for storage for all that data. It is very efficient. I like that part. And finally, your data does not leave the cluster. Everything that ground cover needs is in your cluster except the web UI. So that's good from the security perspective. But then I'm not sure why only web UI is the SaaS part of it. If I'm running everything myself, I would, I can probably just as well run the web UI. 
Uh, so that part is a bit confusing, but anyways, it's great. The data is not leaving your cluster, except the essential data for the web UI, not the important data, not the data that could put you into trouble. All in all, ground cover is absolutely amazing. I think it might be the best monitoring, troubleshooting, everything in Kubernetes type of tool. It has it all. And what I really like about it is that it innovates where it matters and it uses existing solutions when it doesn't. It does not try to reinvent the wheel. It uses proven technologies like Victoria Metrics, Loki, and so on and so forth. And then it puts eBPF into the story so that it can collect the data in a better way. And it combines all the data in a really useful web user interface. So it innovates where it matters and it reuses the things that are already good and exist. And on top of that, it is a relatively young project. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where ground cover is going into the future. Try it out. You're probably going to like it. See you next time. Cheers.